Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel structures in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on the process of performing the analysis and reviewing the results both on screen and through the reports. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model, which is ready to be analyzed. To invoke your analysis, you're going to go to the ribbon and select your process tab followed by your Analyze Model icon. Now in RAM Elements, you are able to perform a static linear elastic analysis, a static nonlinear elastic analysis, and also an eigenvalue analysis. At this time, you're going to enter your information. For this model, we are going to go ahead and perform a second order analysis using P delta. Now, if you were also performing an analysis that contained any tension-only members, the program would automatically perform a nonlinear analysis for you. We can enter the rest of the parameters, and once you're satisfied, we're going to click on the Analyze button to start the analysis process. Now after the analysis is complete, let's go ahead and take a look at the status window down here. And we're going to notice that the analysis was successfully completed. Now if you don't get this message, if you get any warnings or errors, they're going to appear in this window. These could include things like if it recognized an instability in your structure or if there's any pieces of information that's missing that's necessary for an analysis. That sort of information will be indicated here and you're going to want to go ahead and fix that before proceeding on to anything else. Now of course any changes after you perform an analysis will mean that you're going to need to reanalyze your structure to make sure everything is current. Now after your analysis is performed, we can review a variety of results both on screen and through the analysis reports. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Now all of the results that you can see on screen will be available through the View tab of the ribbon. So we're going to go ahead and select that area and we're going to find a window within the View tab that's going to include all of your analysis results. And let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to take a look at our reactions at the base of the structure. Now for this particular model, we did model fixed supports at the base of all of our main columns. And we can review the results for both our translational and rotational degrees of freedom for each support in the model that's selected. To view each support, you're going to come down here and select the different options available. Now right now my font size is a little bit large, so we can control the size of the font using the up and down arrows in the status bar. Now what we're seeing here on screen is the reactions for the currently selected load case or load combination. To, so to review the information for any load case, you're going to again come down to your status bar and use the load pull down menu. For example, I'm going to select one of my service load combinations and to review my reactions. Here's my dead load case. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and review our member forces. Before I do that, I'm going to clean up the view on my screen. Now if I go up to my quick access toolbar, I'm going to find this icon, which is a convenient way to kind of turn off any display options you currently have turned on. So I'll go ahead and click on that and you're going to see the reactions are going to be removed from the view. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my member forces in the model. So I can review information on the axial, shear, torsional moment, and also flexural moment. I can view the diagrams and I can also review the values. 
So here, for example, I'm going to select the axial option. I'm going to tell the program I want to see the values. It's going to basically be able to show the axial force in each of the selected members. If I want to view one particular member, I can just click on that member as well. So it's going to show you information for every member that's currently selected. Again, this is showing the information for the currently selected load case or load combination. So if I wanted to say, for example, see the results of a design case for this scenario, I can select a different option. Now, in addition to that, I can also, if I don't want to see the axial forces, let's go ahead and take a look at the flexural moments about the strong axis of the members. I can see that information as well. If I want to clear up this view, again, I can just turn off all of my display options. Now, as a reminder, to view the default sign convention of things like axial forces or flexural moments, you can find that information in the help file for RAM elements. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our member stresses. So we're going to come up to our View tab in our ribbon, and let's go ahead and click on the Stresses icon, which is going to turn the stresses on in our view. Let me select a particular load case, because again, this is displaying information according to the currently selected load case. Now we notice when we select a different load case, the legend did change slightly. Now, right now we're seeing our member stresses on the screen, and we're going to notice that this is a pull-down menu. So you can review this menu to see other different types of stress types that are available. Now, just like we had seen before, I can control what I'm seeing on the screen because I can select certain items. Say, for example, I want to take a look at one of my frames. Well, I can isolate my frame, and you can see I can see the color variances a lot more easily when I select maybe one or two members at a time. If I want to view just this and nothing else, I can go to my Home tab in my ribbon, and I'm going to isolate this frame by telling it to hide unselected elements. So I can view that. I can also view maybe an elevation if that would make things a little bit more convenient for me. And now I can see the information a little bit more clearly. I also have a couple of other options down here to help me view different types of information. To turn everything back on again, I'm just going to unselect the hide unselected elements. And let's go back to our typical isometric view. The next thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to look at the axial stresses in the members. So I'm going to return to my View tab in my ribbon, and I'm going to click on this icon here to show the axial stresses. Again, this is going to show the stresses according to the currently selected either design or service load combination. So I can see the stresses in each member. I can also isolate a group for more information. Let's return to the View tab in the ribbon now, and let's take a look at some displacement or deflection information. So I'm going to come up to my analysis area, and the first thing I'm going to select is my nodal displacements. And I can select any direction. So here's translational, and here's rotational. So say I want to know how much it is deflecting in the vertical direction. I'm going to select TY, and then it'll give me a value for each node in the model of how much it's deflecting in the vertical direction. Uh, what I can do is I can then select one of my service load combinations to see that information. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to review uh, the deformed shape of the structure. So we're going to come down here and select deformed shape. I can see the deflected shape. If I wanted to see it with the original shape to give myself a reference point, I can also turn that on at the same time. 
Now that we've gone through many of the analysis results that we can see on screen, let's go ahead and also take a look at the analysis report that will provide you from some further information. In the ribbon, we're now going to select the Output tab, and we're going to come to the Analysis area. And let's go ahead and click on that. And we're going to find our analysis results. Now, you also probably noticed that I had my entire structure turned on at this point. As information, whatever information you want to see in your analysis report needs to be selected prior to entering this area. So if you only are interested in, say for example, your roof beams, you could just turn those on and only the members that are selected will appear in your analysis report that you're invoking at that moment. So while we're in our analysis report, we can see that there are a variety of pieces of information. And you may want to print multiple analysis reports depending upon what you're looking for at that time. So what I'm looking for is information on my displaced shape of the structure and my reactions. Those, so those will be available in the nodal area. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my displacement envelope, and my reaction envelope because I don't want just a currently selected load case or combination I want an envelope solution. Now both of these it would be relevant to have our service load combinations selected and not our design load combinations. So in the load conditions area I can select which load cases or combinations I want included as candidates for that particular report I'm running right now. As a quick way to just select my service load combinations, I can just click on this button here. And if we scroll down, you see all of our service load combinations are selected and nothing else. So once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And then our analysis results uh, will appear. So let's scroll down and see what we have. So for every single node in the model that I have selected at the time I asked the program to write this report for me, I have my nodal displacement envelope, which will indicate the maximum and minimum translational and rotational displacements for each node, considering the service load combinations that I selected. The combination that controlled each nodal displacement is also indicated. Below that, if I scroll on down, I will also be able to find my envelope for nodal reactions. This indicates the maximum and minimum translational and rotational reactions for each support, considering the surface load combinations that I selected. The combination that controlled each reaction is also indicated. So this is a very quick way to see what's controlling the design or the analysis or the worst case scenario for that particular type of piece of analysis information. Now before we close the analysis report, let's take a look at the ribbon that's available at the top of the screen. What you're gonna notice is that you can print this report or you can also save it as a Microsoft Word document or a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So that's important in case you need to further manipulate or save this information for your records. We'll go ahead and close that report at this time. Now maybe I wanna view another piece of analysis information. I can come back to this analysis pull down menu and select my analysis results. And this time, instead of some nodal information, maybe I want some force information. So I'm gonna say I want my forces at the stations and I want my maximum forces. Now I'm looking for some force information and for this piece of information maybe I'd rather have my design load combinations. So again I'm going to come up here and say select all my design load combinations. Once we're done we can go ahead and click OK and we can get that those pieces of information in an analysis report. So if we scroll down we can see our forces envelope for each member in our model and we can also see the other pieces of analysis information that we selected. Again, I can save this report as a Microsoft Word format or Excel format if I needed to. The last thing we're going to go ahead and review is how to review the information on one particular member at a time after your analysis is performed. If you would like this type of information as well, 
we can go ahead and identify which member we want to view. Say for example, this roof beam. I can double click on this member and I can also get a force diagram just for this particular member. So I can select any load combination I want and I can select which types of uh, diagrams I would like to see, which might also be helpful if there's a particular area of interest you're looking at. Now that the analysis has been performed and we've reviewed all of our results, we're ready to move on to the next phase, which will be the design process. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.